Twitter International, nosotros somos los encargados de eh, la organización del evento Expo Exterior. Entonces, hoy tenemos el gusto de presentarles a la University of Victoria of Wellington, la cual está ubicada en Wellington, New Zealand. Eh, tenemos el placer eh, de tener aquí con nosotros a, a Kelsey Jackson. Ella nos va a dar una presentación muy completa acerca de la universidad y sus programas para nosotros como estudiantes internacionales. Eh, les recomiendo que estén muy pendientes. Esta universidad tiene el convenio con Colfuturo, que también está siendo parte de nuestros invitados en Expo Exterior. Entonces, pues, eh, nada, chicos, bienvenidos. Eh, cualquier duda que tengan a través del chat, no la pueden hacer. Eh, y al final de, de la presentación de ella, también vamos a tener un espacio en el cual vamos a poder eh, responder todas sus preguntas. Entonces, cualquier cosita, por aquí estaré pendiente respondiendo todo, todo, todas sus inquietudes. Ok, Kelsey, eh, all yours. Ok, wonderful. Thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Kelsey Johnson. I am the representative for Victoria University of Wellington, uh, based in the USA, so working with our students from this side of the world. So I'll share a bit about um, the university today, and feel free to ask any questions as you go. So the university um, is about a mid-sized university based in Wellington, New Zealand. Um, you can see from this beautiful photo here in the front, we are a harbor city um, surrounded by hills and mountains. So really great landscape to be a student. You can go from being in the beach to being in downtown to being in the mountains all in one day. It's a beautiful, compact city and a great place to be a student. So Wellington itself is a really diverse, um, really cool city. As mentioned, we are the capital city of New Zealand. We are located at the southern tip of the North Island, so very central to the entire country if you're planning to travel um, while you're studying with us as well. We also have the highest median income of any city in New Zealand, so great place to transition from being a student to being a professional um, if you're looking to stay in New Zealand after you study with us. And as I mentioned, it's a fairly small uh, capital city. We've only got about 500,000 people in the Wellington region. So students um, have really great access to everything that the city has to offer. Um, heads of business, diplomats, governments, uh, all those great things. So um, it's a great place, again, to be a student. Um, and one of my favorite fun facts about Wellington is that we are the cafe capital. Um, so we actually have more cafes per capita than New York City. So there's a really cool um, coffee culture, foodie culture, tons of great restaurants and bars and um, places to eat in Wellington. So it's not only a great place to be a student, but just a great place to be a person living in the city. Tons of things to do outside of your study as well. So to give you an idea of where the university is located in the city, we're kind of looking um, at an alternative view of the photo I showed at the beginning here. Um, we've got three main campuses in the city. So this green block here at the bottom of this photo shows our main Kelburn campus. That is where most of our university services are housed. Um, most of our subject areas are taught um, education, engineering, health, humanities and social sciences, and science lab as well. Uh, but most students will be taking courses at the campus. We have two libraries, a um, couple student cafes, a big student hub. So that's where most of the mini campus activity will take place. Um, and most students will be living around that campus as well. As you can see, there's a close um, subject area, sub field right next to it as well. Um, Um, and as you can see here on the left side um, is our Patia campus. Um, that is our business and government uh, and law campus. So any students interested in taking courses in those subject areas will be studying at that campus. Um, it's located in the central business district of the city um, and right next to Parliament and the High Court and the Supreme Court. So really great place to study. Um, as a student studying those subjects, there are often uh, former prime ministers, former members of parliament who will be eating at the cafe on campus or teaching courses in that, in that school. Um, so really great way to get really close access to that industry in Wellington. And then over on the right side, we 
we have our Te Aro campus. This is our architecture and design campus located in a more artsy kind of hip area of town. Any students taking any kind of graphic design, building science, architecture courses will be studying at this campus. Um, it's also got a library and a cafe, and it's a really great area uh, for those students. All three of these campuses are no more than a 15 to 20 minute walk from each other. So as you can see, they're pretty spread out among the city, but the city itself is very compact. So it's very easy to get from campus to campus and to the other buildings um, the university owns and you would be living in as a student um, by just walking or taking a bus. We also have um, our Miramar Creative Center up at the top um, right of this photo. That is our film hub. So any students taking um, any postgraduate film or theater production courses would be studying at that uh, campus. And then we also have a computational media innovation center um, for students taking postgraduate courses in uh, media innovation as well. So you may have a few courses on some of those campuses, but our main campuses will be this Kelburn campus, Pipatia, and Te Aro. So when you're um, reviewing your university options kind of around the world, um, rankings are always a great way to get an idea of how to place us on par for other universities you may be looking at. Uh, so good things we like to highlight are that we are uh, rated number one in New Zealand for research intensity. Um, so students who are interested in completing postgraduate research, either at the master's level or PhD, um, we're really proud of this ranking and really um, proud of the fact that we give our students really great access to complete research during their postgraduate studies. Um, our business school is also Triple Crown accredited, so we have AACSB. Equus and AMBA accreditation. Um, so makes any business degree that you would receive with us really well rated in the world. Um, we're also top 100 and top 150 and um, quite a few of our subjects is listed here on the right side of this slide. Um, so as you can see, as a broad university, we're ranked really highly among the world, especially for um, being kind of a, a university in a smaller country. What we're most proud of, though, is that in 2023, we were able to receive the QS STARS um, 5 plus ranking, um, which was only awarded to 13 universities in the world. Um, so it's a really unique ranking that kind of pulls in our sustainability, our climate action, our academics, our research, our student services. So really speaks to the quality of the university and the services that you receive when you are studying with us. So as mentioned, the university is a um, comprehensive research university. So we offer a broad uh, breadth of areas of study for our students. Most of these studies are offered at both the undergraduate and the postgraduate level. Um, so we offer art, business, communication, education and teaching, engineering and digital technologies, um, health, languages and cultures, law, music, um, many subject areas that can be kind of combined, um, as I mentioned, are offered both at the undergraduate and the postgraduate level. Um, our bachelor's degrees are typically three years in length, similar to the UK system. Um, so we don't do any general education. We would start studying this um, subject area right in your first year. And then most of our postgraduate master's degrees, postgraduate diplomas are typically one year to a year and a half in length. Um, so very quick to get through that education path. We also offer um, a few service and leadership opportunities at the university. Um, these are free and open to all of our students and encourage um, to kind of give you an extra option to get involved outside of just your studies at the university. So two programs, um, one is focused on building global citizenship um, and global competency for students. That's our Wellington International Leadership Program. Um, and then if you're interested in a more community service-based volunteering program, we do offer the Wellington Plus program. 
These programs are run both by our international office and they'll set a schedule of events and speaker events, um, seminars, workshops, community volunteering events throughout the semester and the year. And you would pick and choose which events are of most interest to you or work best with your schedule and attend a certain number of events per year to complete the program. It's a great way to meet other international students and other domestic students who kind of share the same interests and wanting to build out these competencies in addition to your um, studies with us. And once you complete the program, you'll receive a certificate and a transcript recognition. So it'll be an additional line on your transcript with us saying that you completed either the Wellington International Leadership Program or the Wellington Plus Program. We also offer a broad range of food support services at the university. Um, so the international office ourselves, we do offer airport pickup for students. So once you have your flights scheduled and you know where you'll be living in Wellington, either on campus or in private housing. Um, you can let us know and we'll pick you up from the airport and make sure you get to your housing safely and securely. We also run an international orientation the week before courses start to make sure you get to know the university and the city. This again offers you a chance to connect with our other international students um, and some of our domestic students as well. And then our international student support services um, officers also act as insurance and visa officers who are there for any questions you may have in those realms. Um, students in New Zealand do have work rights on their student visa. So you would be able to work 20 hours per week um, while you're studying. And on university holidays, you're able to work 40 hours per week. Many of our students take advantage of this, especially our international students who work in retail or coffee shops or restaurants uh, while they're studying with us for just a bit of additional spending money. Um, and then depending on the length um, that you complete a degree with us, you would be eligible for a post-study work visa as well. If you have questions about either of those visas or the regulations around those, you can go to our international student support office for uh, more information. And then broadly at the university, we do have support services such as counseling and student health, um, disability services, student finance, a career office, daycare services if you maybe have children um, and you need to put them in daycare service. We also offer guaranteed accommodation for our international students um, if you apply by the deadlines listed here, um, which is really great because Wellington can be quite expensive to find um, private housing. So when applying to the university, um, we do require English language uh, proficiency. So we've got our requirements listed here and a few different ways to meet those requirements. Um, we have recently added the Duolingo English test as well um, to meet our English language proficiency requirements. Um, as an undergraduate student, we do require that you meet um, 110 points overall. Water that you um, have at least 120 points, but that will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're not sure that you'll have um, the English score enough to meet our requirements, we do offer an English for Academic Purposes course. This is a 12-week intensive program with three starts throughout the year, um, and this program is focused on preparing students to undertake their studies at the university and be competent in their English language studies. Um, so it will be focused on writing papers, conducting research, doing presentations, um, and the course will give you opportunities to practice those skills. It's typically about 6,500 uh, New Zealand dollars per course. Um, most students depending on your IELTS level or English level, um, can complete the one set of the course and then meet the university entrance requirements. But you are eligible to take the course multiple times if you don't feel like by the end of the course you have quite the English language requirements to um, be entered into the university. And the nice thing about this program is that you will submit this application along with your admission application to the degree you're applying for at the university. So once you're admitted to the English for Academic Purposes program and you successfully complete it, you will automatically be entered into your um, admissions program at the university. So you won't have to apply twice. 
the dates to keep in mind, um, since we are in um, Southern Hemisphere, our trimester systems can be a bit different. Um, so we run one semester from late February to late June, a second semester from um, usually early July to early November. Um, and then we do run a semester three over the New Zealand summer. Um, typically, only postgraduate level courses are offered in this semester. Most of our students typically take that off over summer, but some courses may be offered um, in a shorter time frame, either from November to December or January to February. We've also got our application deadlines listed here, um, but applications are accepted on a rolling basis. 2024 applications are open now, and 2025 applications are expected to open in October. You can submit your application early. It's completely free to apply to the university, um, and we don't require typically essays or recommendation letters. You may be required to submit a letter of intent. Um, for some of our postgraduate programs, um, but mostly will require your transcripts from your previous um, qualification, um, a CV, and an application form. So I think we've gotten a question about this in the chat already, but we do have quite a few scholarship options for international students. Um, so we do have a Latin American Academic Achievement Award specifically for students from Latin America, and this is based on excellence. So we will review the transcript that you've submitted as long as you typically have a B plus or higher, you'll be kind of put into the pot for review for this um, scholarship. So that will, will be 5,000 uh, New Zealand dollars. We also have um, a second scholarship that is open broadly all of our international students. That is our Chongarewa Excellence Scholarship. Again, it is based on merit. So we'll review your um, transcript from your previous study for uh, qualification for this scholarship. But that scholarship can be anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 New Zealand dollars. And then we do have some program-specific master's degree scholarships. Um, some of these are automatic scholarships when you apply for the program. Some of them you have to apply for specifically, so definitely take a look on our website for more information about those. But if you're interested in completing a master's degree in any of these subject areas, just keep in mind that might, that might come along with a $10,000 New Zealand dollar scholarship. And then there is um, an outside funding opportunity. Um, the New Zealand government runs the Monaki uh, New Zealand Scholarship Scheme for students from um, all over the world. This is a fully funded scholarship by the New Zealand government, so it is quite competitive. It is for postgraduate studies only, and students from Latin America are recommended to complete studies in climate change and resilience or good governance, which cover a broad range of subjects um, in from climate change policy to public policy. So if you're interested in one of those might fall under that umbrella, definitely take a look at the Monaki New Zealand Scholarship as an option to fund your studies. And I think that is it for me. It was quite quick. <laughs> but if anyone has any questions, uh, my contact information is listed here, but happy to uh, put any, any questions in the chat. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Everything's so clear. Um, chicos, por favor, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta por el chat, les podemos ayudar. Eh, podemos estar aquí otros dos, tres minutos más que tenemos de presentación para responderles a ustedes sus preguntas. Eh, ya ella nos ayudó con la de las becas. You already, you already answered this question. I'm telling them. Eh, ella dio, dijo que habían becas de, de 5,000 hasta los 10,000. Eh, dependiendo del programa al que tú apliques, pero siempre va a estar dentro de ese rango, 5,000 a 10,000. Entonces, eso, ah, como estudiantes internacionales, vamos a poder obtener ese tipo eh, de beca o de descuento en cualquiera de, de esos programas, más que todos los que están ahí siendo específicos en, la terc en el tercer párrafo. Eh, no sé si de pronto tengan alguna otra pregunta. Chicos. Kelsey, do you say do you say that the international student may work forty hours per week? So they can work twenty hours per yeah. week while they're studying, yeah. and then on the university holidays or over the summer, they can work forty hours per week. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Entonces, durante el tiempo de estudio, los estudiantes internacionales pueden trabajar eh, dos, eh, 20 horas a la semana y 40 horas durante el tiempo de vacaciones. Eh, yo te puedo responder, Alison, esa pregunta. I can, I can answer this question. So, no, no. Nivel básico, sí, para los programas de inglés, para poder obviamente empezar a hacer el, ELP, el EAP, que es el English for Academic Purposes, que es un programa de inglés diseñado para ayudarle a las personas a que eh, alcancen su nivel de inglés requerido por la universidad, dependiendo del programa académico. Cabe resaltar que los programas undergraduate piden menos que los programas a nivel posgrado y maestrías. Entonces, eh, el nivel básico te lo van a recibir para poder ir a estudiar el idioma, más no para poder ingresar a un programa académico. Espero haber dado respuesta a tu pregunta, Alison. Eh, Kelsey, we're running out of time, so thank okay. you, thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Nation, everything was so clear. Eh, we are happy to have you here. Thank you. So much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, chicos, muchas gracias por estar. Eh, presentes en, el, la maestre, en, la, en la presentación de la Universidad de Victoria Wellington. Si tienen dudas, si me quieren contactar, aquí en el chat está un mensaje que yo les dejé con mi contacto. Me pueden escribir y podemos agendar un espacio para yo poder ya eh, ayudarles a más detalle con la información de la universidad. Entonces, eh, sí, las últimas preguntas que me, que me hicieron, sí, sí podemos, creo que sí los tienen en educación y en arte, entonces podemos mirar. Eh, escríbanme, porfa, tanto Carolina como María José. Ahí está mi número y podemos mirar a detalle con cada caso. Thank you, Kelsey, again. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.